straight talk from Israel. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. From Jerusalem, we love to July 2019, and we are here in Israel, the Holy Land. Prayers now, why? Uh, where they are expecting an hurricane to hit ground, and we hope that the hurricane won't be strong and uh, they'll be safe by themselves. You see, our role in this world is to pray for everybody. We need to get together our thoughts especially in those days where the world are go- is going crazy, where the enemy of peace are trying to make amends for themselves and they're threatening us every day again and again. And the people of the world are scrambling uh, what else to do. And if we realize what the truth the answer is, is to come to conclusion that we have to share this world together and we have to reach out, and make a deal, and work together that it will be a good good deal to make everything work. It means that if you have to get Brexit deal, just do it. If you have to make uh, some kind of alliances to stop Iran, make those alliances. And uh, I know that they softened the deal today, but maybe an embargo will be in place because we need to choke that, that beast that wants to destroy the world. And I'm calling it that because that's what he does. He, he confuses everybody and he's sending mixed messages and he even have the audacity to say that to America, stay away from our your your allies. Yes, like we can trust Iran. Iran that say something and do something else. Make a deal and then take it and expect the European to come to to, to the stage with the play. I think that there is a lot about uh, justice to talk about today and a lot of good things that can come our way if we just clear our mind for all the nonsense. All right, so you stay put. We'll be back after the break. Israel is located in one of the most volatile areas in the world. Israel is an island of stability and a sea of war and unrest. In the midst of this turmoil, Israel stands out as a beacon of order and human progress. Each week we update you on what's happening in this, the Jewish state, a true light unto the nations. This is Jay Shapiro. Join me every Thursday on Israel News Talk Radio. from Jerusalem with love. I know that the connection is not as best as it can be, but life in this echo world is crazy. You know, everybody, that uh, the war on, on cyber is extremely strong. And yesterday, the whole network of um, 200,000 people got down because uh, something happened to it, and I bet there was hacking in the process. Um, it's it's amazing because what they actually the hacking is doing. They're trying to get the information in not a legal way, obviously. Uh, they try to manipulate. They're trying to get the resources uh, to your contacts, etc. I know that Capital Bank Bank had um, um, an act an hacker going on, and uh, all the social security and data counting is uh, out there. So you guys watch it, check the you know your stuff, and see if uh, it works. Anyway, uh, th- there are 
few things that are happening in the same time, and we know we know that if we don't focus on the, on the ball, uh, things can get us distracted. So first of all, I want to say hello to all our friends in the United States, in Canada, in Israel, in Australia, in United Kingdom, in Germany, in Ireland, hey, and Brazil, our beloved Brazil. Hello, everybody. In the chat room, I cannot get there now, but uh, please remember... I'm always here for you, and uh, Israel News Talk Radio wants to hear what you have to say. So if you have a comment, you can always leave it there, and we'll reply. And let's answer to one uh, comment that was left uh, on my uh, site uh, last week, I guess. Uh, last week I wasn't getting there because I lost a dear friend, and um, there wasn't really much time to, to start politicking about issues. People are saying, and it's true, that I I'm sp I'm support Donald Trump completely. And I stand by him, and I have to listen to other people, and I have to understand that uh, this is not the way to go. So what I say to you all, it's not about if I'm standing with one person or another. It's what the person does. If Donald Trump, the President of the United States, gathered the power of America from the shambles that he founded and get America great again was not a motto, it was a realization of what the leadership of the free world should be, uh, if you can blame me for supporting them, or uh, you know the Trump campaign or Donald Trump himself, I guess not, because you cannot blame me for standing by America and see, seeing her again tribe after the devastation of, you know, the disrespect that we had for so many years. I'm not saying that nobody did a bad work, but it was the accumulation of all action that led America to be weak. And that's what bolstered, uh, you know, the Arab Spring, that's bolstered the Iranian uh, regime to push. And that's where you don't have America in that leadership position. You create a vacuum, and what happens? Somebody ba bad come along. So if you think that I will um, stop supporting anybody who does good for America, you're wrong. I'll be always <clears throat> by America's side, and I'm not saying it just because I get excited about it. It's because this is what I am. Um, when in 2001 arrived and 9-11 happened, everybody were looking around scared. And me that walked a few war before as a child in Israel and felt the agony that they're all feeling, but I knew how to overcome them from practice, not because I was stronger, it's because I knew what what needs to be done from my gut, because you, it's a training, you know, you know the stuff when it happens to you, right? So I, I gather all my forces and I start talking to people and they were asking, where were the, our friends in the rest of the world? How could they let it happen? And you know what? Letting it happen, 9-11, the Twin Tower collapsing in the middle of New York City, the most incredible city in the world, the most, and it was a World Trade Center. It means that the hub of uh, of commerce, they wanted to heat us in the economy. And uh, to stand back uh, as an American, I couldn't do it. As Israeli, I wanted to fight back. So I stand up against a lot to uh to to talk i needed the microphone and there was an opportunity uh, the senate race was uh, opening up and i did that and uh, today i was watching the debate um of uh, the democratic party and i just reminisces about my debates where i had a great man standing by me amazing man you know we had like a uh, Congressman Jim DeMint that became the senator. We had um, David Beasley that is now, uh, he used to be the former governor of South Carolina and now is the, the head of the World Food Organization. Then we had uh, um, the Attorney General that was uh, fantastic of South Carolina, 
um, a son of a senator, a great man, and then we had the mayor of uh, the city of Myrtle Beach. So they all were respected men, and uh, there come a girl from Israel, um, American, of course, a Jewish woman in the Republican Party. They thought that I was like, what a show, you know. They they didn't know how, how to have me. But I needed to empower them. I needed to empower the old talks around what's going on. I needed them to to tell them that President Bush did not send the troops to Iraq for in vain because there were mass, mass. Um, weapon of mass destruction. And they would say, oh, we never, never find it. I said, he didn't find it yet because in Iraq, the humongous amount of Iraqi uh, territory, how can you pretend even to say he didn't find it? And that was the argument against uh, George Bush constantly in the fir- after the first uh, term. And in the second term, he needed to debunk it. And I was there 2004 together with them, and there was a presidential race too. So I needed to stand with America to say, yes, you are fighting for a cause that, you know, got you got you uh, in the stomach. You didn't do it for pleasure. You didn't invade Iraq just because to close the deal after the Bush senior did not finish it. In ninety one, <clears throat> it was it was a accumulation of things that happened. So sure enough, I stand. And today, when I was watching the debate, the uh, Democratic debate, I said, "Oh my God, it's so boring." It wasn't. Um, Biden was not there, but uh, Bernie Sanders looks like he's gonna have a heart attack in every second. And I was like feeling for him. Come on, guy, you relax. You know, it's not the fight of the century. Then you see Elizabeth Warren that she is like the the policeman in the routine. It seems like she's running only to make sure the candidates are doing their job. The attack is on Donald Trump, and you know the first thing that comes from her mouth is like, "How bad is the Donald Trump?" Well, lady, tell us what good about you that you're talking so bad about the president of the United States, and all that routine with the. Uh, the ox of uh, cahooting with the Russian, when Hillary Clinton herself had um, had information from a foreign agent. You know, the English agent was uh, uh, MI5 or MI6 guy. He gave uh, a dossier, and they base it. First of all, they pay him to do it, the Democratic Party. Then they use it, a foreign agent, saying that there is another coaching with another foreign entity. So I don't understand you using a foreign entity to prove that there is a foreign entity. You are doing it yourself. How can you even think um, that this dossier will fly? And for some reason, nobody stopped the buck in the, in, immediately, like validated. Of course, the court did not realize what's happening, I guess, because they gave them a visa for it to to make it um, appearant, and then you have an uh, uh, investigation that went for two years or more, spent thousands, millions of dollars, and then you have a congressional hearing that sounds like, oh, I didn't do the job, I don't know what they're talking about. It was humiliating to see what they did to Donald Trump and how they treated America bad by sending all Congress after a witch hunt like this. And I'm not saying it because um, I love Donald Trump, but it's because his justice has to be seen. It looks like very bad justice uh, for the Democratic Party even to waive it. And they're going to lose. They're going to lose a lot because now that uh, President Trump is um, showing up Baltimore, everybody's going to look around and say to the congressman, what did you do good for me lately? How are you going to continue um, winning another campaign after another when you're not doing anything, when you even got money? Like they're talking about billions of dollars that went to Baltimore to to create some kind of different condition. And they did not. 
So what I'm saying, you guys, when I debated, I debated from the heart because I wanted to stand by America. They are debating just to kick a president that they don't like uh, what he's doing. It's, it's not in their world order. So, of course, they want to out. So let's take a break, and we'll be back, and we'll talk more about uh, the arrow. Um, all. all right? The Tamar Yona Show. Tamar, she's sassy. She's smart. She's funny. But she's also a real Jewish mother. Hi, everybody. I'm Tamar Yona. And yes, I can be all of those things. But at Israel News Talk Radio, I'm here to bring you the news stories and guests that you may not hear anywhere else. Join me live on air Sundays, Mondays, and Tuesdays for the most unique and bold talk radio in Israel. The Tamar Yona Show. And we are back. It's Orly Benny Davis, and this is From Jerusalem with Love. You know, uh, we talked about the debate. It was boring, and but I want to restate something. Uh, when they talk, you know, a perspective of humanity is very important when you are running for office. Perspective, it means if you see the big picture or if you see the tiny bits, and the whole focus on the health care issue. It's like... Healthcare is a very essential issue, but it's a technic- technicality of the system. If you want to change something, the system needs to be modified completely. And uh, there was no lo- look, you know, behind that. It started immediately with with um, Medicaid, and they're talking to transform, reform. I, I don't know what they are planning. But, oh boy, you know, we cannot allow this to happen. Now, I'm not interfering in American policy, even though that I was and I am a part of the Republican Party. I do have the right to say my own, and I will use it every time I see something wrong. But right now, the Democrats are doing so bad that the Republicans don't need my help. But they do need my help in one thing. Keeping America safe is the slogan. Keeping American safe that somebody is getting shot in the middle of town just out of the blue because somebody had a gun, that's something that we need to prevent. And, and preventing it means to, be, uh, to outsmart them, to be ahead of them. You cannot protect, defense, and see people through if you don't uh, elevate your understanding to what security means. And, you know, in Israel, I've been shuffling for the last five years through the whole convention, um, security convention that I can touch. Uh, we're talking from drones to um, border security, from uh, airplo- airports, um, dr- baggage, anything that c- you can even imagine. I was there, and I was there also to see, you know, a presentation of the Aero 3, and uh, sure enough, uh, this week we had a successful launch of the Aero 3 uh, with collaboration, uh, with a grace of collaboration of America uh, and Israel in Alaska. God bless Alaska. So we had that system working. It worked fantastic, so the Iranian can see that, you know, don't try to threaten Israel or America for that sake, we we see you coming uh, before you even start. So the Iranian launches a missile too, just to show that they're man enough to shoot one in the air. Empty, of course, but, um, but the idea is that the North Korea did the same, but the Japanese were afraid that it will fall in their territory. So, um, you know, this testing creates some kind uh, manhood, uh, they won't start shooting. And I say, you know, guys, maybe we should think about another way. Okay, don't don't aggravate uh, the land. We need we need to calm down the situation. 
And calming down means that we need to go back to talk. And sure enough, you know, Macron was uh, smart to invite um, the new elected prime minister of England to, to talks. And now they're going to have a threesome with, uh, with America to see what they're going to do in the um, port of Hormuz um, to see if Iran um, contentious stand will be stopped. Uh, I, I say do an embar embargo like the old guy, like Churchill would have done. Something that really put the buck, you know, say this is it, this is how we feel, you stop it or else. If we don't do that, uh, they will still push us. And you know what? That dance is dangerous because somebody will get hurt in the end. And in between, there is a sacrifice of so many humanity, human people, human being, and uh, also endangering the geographic. And I learned, I learned that people um, in Europe are so sick and tired of the uh, they want the Syrian people to go to Syria. Something that it will be very wise if we only add a United Nation that act up like a responsible entity body that can accumulate some kind of understanding where, where to be and what to do. But not, I, I, why is that keeping this United Nation? For what? To, you know, UNRWA, they just have an investigation to see that the misconduct of their uh, alleged official. Of course, of course, what, uh, what else? They're keeping refugees, they're keeping refugees and they are going to, again and again, um, you know, uh, to, to keep the Palestinians in the same stage, never giving them a chance never giving them a chance to develop their own livelihood. And uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is trying to play it. And today there was like uh, some talks actually yesterday about uh, letting Palestinians build in Area C, which is area territory designed to the Israeli, which is ludicrous, should not happen. But I don't know what's the pressure Cooker is being doing to him, but I guess uh, somebody's pushing. And while you push, let me tell you, while you push, I want you to stay out of the Israeli election. Uh, I know America likes to do that. I know that Bill Clinton did a very fine job when he did that with uh, Barack. But you see, when you put a puppet, uh, and it's not such a strong puppet, you drop. Uh, and Barack did drop after a few few months. So. So please, please don't think that you can control, divert uh, money or support to Israel election uh, by all means. Because if you're a citizen, please do. But if you're a Jewish person even, that think that you can run the show and make us do whatever you want, even that it's the Jewish state, but you're not a citizen of it, you stay out of it. And I'm telling them, all our friends that think that they can run our show and run our life uh, in Israel, and I'm saying it from the Israeli perspective, it becomes so transparent that it's scary. Because when Barack said to Yair Lapid, Yair, you need to stay out of blue and white because I knew the three points what it means. It's probably support, American support. Because when I went to Yair Lapid uh, campaign, I saw a prototype of American election. You see, Israel is so not developed that, that way. And when you go to a place like a, a great hotel, like uh, the World of Astoria, you know everything is working in place. The four season, everything is sticking like... Uh, like a Swiss watch. But in Israel, you know, something is not, not fixed. You know, somebody will forget the banner or something will happen, right? Sure enough, sure enough, I come to the Yair Lapid campaign and I see it's such a good operation. I said, this is American. This is American. I can bet my thing. I've been around for too long to, to not recognize it. And that's why uh, politics for me it's like a second nature because I've been trained, not by choice. I, I just got into it since I was little and nothing I could do about it. I just got into that system. So when you have a place 
uh, where um, you see something that is a prototype of some other or like, you know, a style of something, you know, you can call it. And if it looks like it, you, you know, talks like it, it is it, you know, the drill. So I'm asking American politician uh, or, or uh, policymakers to stand out and please don't wait because in the last election you see uh, and we didn't get any success of um, presenting a government and Bibi Netanyahu uh, was trying to play well was playing very bad he was playing with the presentation of uh, old old soldier um, manifest that they found in Syria he played with uh, the Donald Trump routine he did everything in power to show that he is the man. But you know, if you are the man, you don't have to show. The world, no, you don't need it. It's like your name is you, and you can see your action will talk wonder. Now think about it. Um, if American interfere in Israeli election by pouring money, like the State Department pour money last time, 2015, uh, to V15 or the, what was the liberate what kind of um, you know pack that got the money and transfer it to the V15 and uh, they pour money into the Israeli system and sure enough Senator Cruz uh, sa stated that and it was wrong <clears throat> and they pour money to the Arab also to create some kind of uh, some kind of uh, support because the Arab need money, you know, because nobody uh, fundraising the Arabic uh, citizenship because they don't know how to do politics the way America does. So the truth of the matter, if you want us to be as the country we are, help us with education. I told you that before and I tell you again, if there is no American university in Israel, is the you know, oxymoron of all cooperation. Because if you don't teach me who you are, and you don't share with me your thought and understanding and philosophy, how can we walk long side by side for a long distance? Because it's a long friendship. It's a friendship that should last forever, God willing. Because in God we trust is on your motto. And we are the state, the holy land of God. So that's the connection. So stay put. We'll be back after this. In a time where feelings have become fact, where rational thought and common sense has disappeared, one man stands above it all. I'm Howie Sobaker, your political hitman. Political Hitman airs every Tuesday at 11.59 p.m. North American time, 7 a.m. Israeli time, only on Israel News Talk Radio. Are you interested in transforming your life, drawing closer to the Creator, and uncovering the deeper meanings and hidden treasures in the Hebrew Bible? Then join me, Rav Yitzhak Michelson, and me, William Hall, on the Science of Kabbalah, where we are seeking to narrow the gap between what we understand of our physical and spiritual worlds. So make sure to tune in every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Israel Time, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, here on Israel News Talk Radio. And this is Orly Benny Davis, and this is From Jerusalem with Love. What would be a show with me if I wouldn't give you some inspirational thought or an understanding that needs to be coming from higher above and also a logistic that needs to work? Because every time people say we want to fix something, 
you want to know that they are fixing it in the right direction. So mathematics is, you know, a zero-sum game. You always have to talk to basic. And why would the Jewish people are back in the Holy Land? It's because ancestors are here, our patriarch and matriarch. But sure enough, when we had a peace accord, for some reason, people thought that our matriarch you know, founding fathers of the religion, of the Jewish religion, are not important and they can be an area that is designated to the Palestinian. So we're talking about uh, Rachel Toom, for example. Uh, Rachel is the matriarch of the Jewish people. No Arab will state that she's a matriarch of Israel, okay? Rachel was uh, the, the wife of Jacob. Jacob is Jacob is Israel. So any connection to anybody else is false. But the world insisted and UNESCO determined that she is um, under under her uh, are under uh, Palestinian. Which you know there is no Palestinian. They are like it's an Arab league um, pretense, and they're sending people of the land to just try to occupy some some land that doesn't belong to them in the first place. But the most important thing, if you believe of the Bible and you have a billion people believing in the Bible and the Jewish pure faith is in the Bible, you know the story of Abraham when Sarah Sarah died and he he, he went to Hebron and he bought the Ma'arat HaMachpelah. How you say Ma'arat HaMachpelah? I'm not even remember that. But the, the tomb, the, the tomb for, of the matriarchs, Abraham uh, and the matriarchs, Sarah, Leah, and Rivka, and you had uh, the cave of the patriarch. Thank you, Kalman. You are dear. Uh, the cave of patriarch in Hebron is a part of the Jewish ancestry, and for some reason, you go there, you cannot get near the the near Abraham tomb or Isaac tomb because there is like a division, the most ludicrous thing, because in the Bible itself, they say that Abraham said, I'm going to buy it for 400 shekel, going to buy it from the owner of that land. And he said to him, no, no, for me and you, for what what money is. And Abraham knows, you know, like a good man that he was, an incredible, humongous man of Abraham. The, you know, the patriarch of the Jewish people, he says, no, we need to pay for that. And sure enough, he paid for the cave of the patriarch and, uh, and UNESCO decided it's not doesn't belong to us. So let's claim what's ours. And I'm saying claim it not because we want another piece of land. This belongs, it's like, uh, would you ever give up ancestry um, um, caves? Do you ever think that it's the right thing to do? So if you start wrong, how you pretend even to accomplish a peace deal or peace accord, it will be all crooked. That's why, you know, um, the, the, the map, when Christopher uh, Warren signed the map on the, the deal with, um, with uh, I don't know if it was Hebron, but the, the, the tomb of Rachel, it did not include the tomb of Rachel. The map, the actual official map of the tomb of Rachel is not included. You can go there. I saw the signature on the map of Christopher Warren. Uh, and that was when Bill Clinton was in office. So I would say we need to investigate and see if we can claim it back. Because it's only 100, year, 100 feet from the entry of uh, the people uh, entering to the Palestinian to Bethlehem and Bethlehem, Bethlehem, guys, Bethlehem is a Jewish city. It's it, the name is in in Hebrew. So I, I understand. It's like um, every time people say, "Why you think uh, you know you took the Palestinian land?" I said, "You know, you cannot call a land of people with." Um, with a letter that they cannot pronounce because if anybody knows Arabic, they cannot pronounce it P. 
and Palestinian with a P cannot say, they cannot say it. So I would say I'm not laughing, but that, that's the biggest ox of all. Because if the League of Nations, when they wanted to create some kind to, to drop on the Jewish people, they created this Palestinian issue and send somebody, Arafat, from Egypt to come and claim it. And, you know, you pay warriors all the time. If you have mercenary, they will claim whatever they want. That's what they are paid for, to claim what is not there. That's why pirates exist. That's why thieves and everything. So they're trying to claim. And I was sitting with that, the attache of the France uh, embassy uh, last week in a dinner party at uh, the Vietnamese uh, uh, embassy. And... And I told them, guys, it's about time to stop with this. The League of Nations needs to take responsibility, get their act together. They're their people. Take over. The Palestinian land was demanded, was given back to the Jewish state. It's the name of the land after the, the Turks left or the British pushed them out, even though the Arabs helped them pushing out. That's why they took uh, they got Transjordanian. There, that was the deal. But after Transjordanian, they didn't have enough. Uh, you know, with eating, they got the appetite, so they wanted more. So what I'm saying now, so let's not start with why Jordan exists at all because it's on our land. We'll talk about that later. I want to talk about the fact that the patriarch, that the, the cave of the patriarchs are under uh, Bogus control. Hebron is the city of it. That it needs to be. Uh, uh, it needs to be safe, regarded, and not to be immaculated with with bomb or people that uh, pretend to to do commerce, but they do terror. And uh, a few years back, we had a very very strong claim that uh, you know the people that kidnapped those three guys and started a whole round of war um, war war from Hebron, so and that area. And um, we know, we know, there is no s silly thing for us even to pretend we don't know. Everybody know. So I want you to know that when you come to the table and start fixing the world, and um, before you start fixing God's creation, the climate, because let it live, leave it to God, okay? You can preserve, you can make sure that you don't uh, put pollution in the air. That's your responsibility. But climate change, it's such the audacity of even considering you can change the climate. It brings me to, to, to say, are you guys uh, in the faculty of mind to understand that you are, it's not in your control? Can you understand that God Almighty created it and the sun comes every day and the moon comes every night and we are here there seeing it and taking it for granted and you want to fix something? Now, if he makes an orican goes, and I hope that the orican will never reach strong enough uh, to hurt uh, Hawaii. Our beloved friends are there. Uh, if you think that uh, that if you create that, it's because you can change it. Can you change earthquake in California or anywhere else? God, uh, the audacity of that uh, left wing. That's where they left, leave God out. That's why they want to pretend that there is not God. That's why they become atheists, because they wanted to eliminate God from their presence, because they are so all almighty, and they think that they are the cum cul culmination of greatness in humanity. And you know what? Elizabeth Warren uh, performing yesterday it was so pity. I want her off the stage, not because uh, I don't want her to run. I just want not to be humiliated by another woman shouting and screaming like uh, like nuts. Okay? So uh, if you want to gain control of the world, or if you want to gain control of a position, first pray to God that you are worthy of that. Pray to God that you can be the messenger that you're supposed to be for your people. Pray to God that he helps you from all those goons running around and trying to kill us day in and day out. And pray to God that you survive to deliver a good deal. God is there and he gave us a soul and we need to be worthy of whatever he gave us. So please, guys, pray with me for the safeguards of the world, safeguard to Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the holy city, where you have 
people playing soccer on the middle of the holiest fall of the Jewish state. That's why a synagogue on Temple Mount is the call of the hour. And please don't think that we are, don't deserve to pray before God. Because if you give us a wall in a rainy day to pray off, come on, guys, this is 2019. And I'm Orly Benny Davis, and I'm going to be here to tell you how much I love you, and I love Jerusalem, and I love God Almighty, and I'll be his messenger with all my might, and I'll do my best to safeguard the Jewish people wherever they want, even though they try to push us around sometimes as Israeli. And the Israeli people are really good-hearted, and they are grace-blessed country and blessed people. And we welcome all of you guys to come and visit. And we are making a new entry to Jerusalem so we can honor you when you come visit. Okay, so come, call us, tell us. And I stand with Donald Trump, yes, because he's, he's God sent and we respect his deeds. And I bless you all and I hope to hear with you next week. God bless you. you get the inside news on Israel. At Israel News Talk Radio, we're dedicated to sharing Israel's inside story with the world by providing our listeners with news on Israeli politics, current affairs, and Israeli Jewish culture. The Israel News Talk Radio homepage also provides you, the listener, with useful information at your fingertips with scrolling news headlines, weather, currency exchange, Shabbat candle lighting times, and so much more. Our radio programming is always accessible and on demand. We operate absolutely free of charge for everyone, everywhere. If you love what we do, partner with us now by becoming an Israel News Talk Radio supporter. With your support, you'll be inscribed on our Israel News Talk Radio Wall of Fame. There's nothing like us in the world. Be part of something great. Israel News Talk Radio. Straight talk from Israel. Howdy, this is Rita from League City, Texas, now living in Israel. And though my heart may have belonged to Texas, it now belongs to Israel and all the fantastic show hosts at Israel News Talk Radio. Hi, this is Michael Solomon from Kiryat Arba, Israel. And why do I love listening to Israel News Talk Radio? Because I love listening to the interesting interviews they do and their news reporting that most other media sources don't cover. Hey, this is Nicole Eko from Malmo, Sweden. It gets pretty cold here in Sweden, so I love cuddling up with a warm cup of tea while I listen to Israel News Talk Radio. Hey, everybody, this is Frank Doris from Tennessee. Me and my dog Buster really love listening to Israel News Talk Radio. <laughs> You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. News, opinion, and more. You're listening to Israel News Talk Radio. 